Welcome Climate Viewers. My name is Jim Lee from Climate Viewer News at ClimateViewer.com, ClimateViewer.org, and WeatherModificationHistory.com. Um, this is going to be a very exciting video. I got prompted by a YouTube comment, um, and it's something I've put off for like two years. I mean, just the things you, you, you in your to-do list you don't get around to, but today we're going to talk about the Russian woodpecker, which is an ionospheric heater, which did weather warfare over America in 1986 and how that is related to the Chernobyl reactor meltdown. Um, this buckle your seat belts. This is going to be a crazy one. Um, so first off, I'd really like to thank my patrons over on patreon.com slash climate viewer. Um, already had a whole lot of people sign up for that. Um, you guys are the best. I greatly appreciate your support. And with this support, I will be able to continue to do this and grow this and bring this message to the masses. Um, with that Patreon support is the chat room. The chat room is very active over on Discord. So if you want to get to the chat, it's very simple. Come to climateviewer.com and right here at the top of the page is the chat button. It is also on Climate Viewer 3D, uh, right at the very top of the page, click chat. So there you go. Um, I do appreciate all my Patreons and I hope you guys will continue to support me. So I did a video um, just recently, before I mentioned that. Also, I'm going to be doing um, an interview on the Gry America podcast on May 9th. So I hope you guys will tune in to that going to be pr pretty epic from what I understand. They're pretty awesome people. So uh, make sure you're there for that. It's going to be pretty crazy. Um, and you can find that on climateviewer.com slash interviews linked to the upcoming broadcast and all of my previous recordings are below that. So with that being said, yesterday I made a video um, or technically this morning, um, <laughs> where it called Intro to Weather Warfare, Weather Mod Hour, Episode 1. And I'm going to be doing a series on this, um, you know, pretty regularly, at least once a week. I hope to do it on Throwback Thursday, since we are Weather Modification History. And I hope that you guys will share, like, and check out Weather Modification History on Facebook and weathermodificationhistory.com. Now, I mirror, I'm going to mirror all of these live videos over to YouTube, and when I did, I put it up over here, and lo and behold, I got a great comment, and that comment really just tickled me pink. And I'll bring it up right here so everybody at home can see it. Shout out to Southern California Deplorable Henry Lindman. I have a question, Mr. Lee. Is it possible they could reasonably use a nuclear reactor small or portable to power up an ionospheric heater. And you know what? I said, yes. In fact, the Chernobyl reactor powered the Russian woodpecker. I actually deeply regret not being actually, uh, excuse me. I actually deeply regret that not being in the timeline in this video. I will remedy that shortly. So, you know me, I got to making a map tonight um, because I realized I didn't have a good enough map for you. And I wanted to really um, show it off. So, let's get straight over here. We're going to go to climateviewer.org. I'm going to refresh this page just so we can start from scratch. Mm -hmm. Now, if you go to climateviewer.org, link in the details. Um, there's already a sharing link so you can play along at home. You just click on Climate Viewer Maps and you'll see me there. And you can either choose Atmospheric Sensors and EMF Sites or Geoengineering and Weather Modification. It is in both sections right here under the Russian Woodpeckers. Um, so we're going to click on this one right here. Russian Woodpeckers, Steel Yard, Steel Work, and Duga Radars, and Krug Ionospheric Probes. I just found out what a Krug Ionospheric Probe was tonight. <laughs> so this has been an exciting night for me and I want to share it with you immediately. So what is this Russian woodpecker? What's this all about? Um, is it a big deal and why am I so damn excited? Well, God bless him, buddy Dominic Marama from weathermodificationhistory.com 
came across this PDF and made a nice little infographic out of it, and it pretty much breaks down the whole story for you. Um, and it goes like this. So this Russian woodpecker, or the Soviet over-the-horizon radar system, was um, also known by NATO as Steel Yard or Steel Works, is part of what's called the Duga Array of Missile Defense Radars. These are phased array radars. You can find them all over the world today. I have a great uh, map on that. Um, it's called Star Wars, the Space Fence, Missile Defense Radar. It's in the same section. You can take a look at it yourself. Check out Alana Freeland's book on Space Fence Lockdown. And uh, you'll know what we're talking about here under an ionized sky. Um, so the three steel yard over the horizon radars were used to send out a 10 hertz signal. And according to Thomas Bearden, as we can see right here in this infographic, weather modification project. The Soviet weather modification project is referred to as the woodpecker system. It involves the transmissions of extremely low frequency ELF waves at about 10 hertz using Tesla transmitters in Chernobyl, Gomel, and you can read it yourself. I'm not Russian. These transmitters generate electromagnetic transmissions that produce ELF scalar grid over the United States. This is done by transmitting these low frequency scalar waves in pairs so that they converge at a predetermined point on the Earth's surface and cause a disruption of the atmosphere. This technology can be used to alter the course of the jet stream and set up long-term weather blocks. Dude's got a tinfoil hat, right? Dude's got a tinfoil hat. That's what everybody's going to say. But here's just a little infographic um, you know, on how that works. So these three radars radars um we're cooking the sky over america and and what did that do well and what does that have to do with chernobyl well the chernobyl radar uh, or uh, reactor melted down on april 26 1986 why does that matter it says here it's less than 30 kilometers away from the the large russian woodpecker well let's take a look at that so let's go back over here to climb viewer 3d and let's get this little sidebar. Well, let's just, why not just click the button right there? We could just fly right to it. So I'm going to click on Chernobyl. We're going to fly down here and take a good look. I'm going to scroll down here to the bottom. Let's close that up. And go to base globe and turn on the satellite view because we want a good shot of this. So that is the Chernobyl reactor right there. And you can see it right here. Got a big dome over it to keep the nuclear radiation in there. Here's what it looked like when it blew up boom um and that was you know something a lot of people were pretty concerned about a lot of people heard about the chernobyl reactor meltdown um but did you know that it's only that far <laughs> it is really close to the chernobyl reactor so here is the russian woodpecker um, that most people know about. Now, this is the Chernobyl 2 Duga Radar 2. Now, there's three of them, and I haven't numbered them yet, but it pretty much goes like this. There's a transmit site and a receiving site, so there's six separate uh, radars listed in this map, okay? So you see Duga Radar 1 through 6 right here. Um, one transmit, one receiver, one transmit, receiver. You get the point. Here's what they look like. Now I'm gonna, I might as well bring this image up in a new tab so you can take a look at it up close. Pretty tall, looks like harp, except it's standing up on its side, except it was built way before harp. Now, this is some pretty interesting history for a lot of reasons. Um, namely, most people have never heard of this at all. Um, but the fact that it's related to the Chernobyl reactor meltdown is just mind boggling. And we're going to get into the details behind that because it is fascinating history. So in here, this is, uh, if you just click on that Duga 3 radar, you can see all of this information. You can also see it just by clicking on the information tab right here. Same thing. Um, regardless, here's the infographic and here's two articles about it. So 
this Duga 3 radar right next to it is what's called a Krug and it's a Krug um, ionospheric probing system. Now I've never heard this till today when I was snooping around on Wikimapia which is one of my favorite places to get information from. You can click the link there. It'll fly you over here. And it'll say ionospheric probing system Krug and you can see photos of that. Here's some tall towers, some wires. What's this creepy cage looking thing? Oh my gosh, that looks really weird, right? Come on guys, this is some crazy stuff. So this is their ionospheric probing station right next to their over the horizon radar, which was used to do weather warfare over America. <gasps> oh my God, I'm I could do, ugh, just too excited. Very, very too excited at the moment. So um, these Krug ionospheric probes were near each of these Russian woodpeckers. So let's take a look at some of these woodpeckers and see what they look like because according to General Thomas Bearden, as we saw in the image, which is now buried in a whole lot of tabs, um, it's right here. So this is what we're looking at and he shows the three here. Well, I only had one of them on my map till tonight. So I figured might as well flesh out the rest of the story. Here they are. That is super annoying. All right, here we go. This is up number one, and we come over here, and we see this is in Ukraine. Come down here to the ground. This place has been leveled, obviously, and you can go um, look at that on Wikimapia as well. So that's one of them. This is the receiver site nearby. As you can see, right here this lengthy field and next to that is another krug pretty interesting stuff now there's a second link on here that you can check out which i think i already yes i have it up over here already and this is called the krug circle and i thought it was pretty fascinating except for that picture not going to come up for us um this is this is what the hell there we go perfect so this is what they look like. Um, very similar to what's on the Duga 3 radars, the, the, the Russian woodpecker ionospheric heaters. Doesn't look like heart, but it's the same idea. There's a real weird looking antenna and a whole lot of them putting 10 million watts into the air. I was boggled by that. 10 million watts? Wow, so HARP is only 3.6 million watts. This one's 10 megawatts, and there were three of them. Back to the map. So that's the Krug that's right next to that one. So that's a receiving station with a, an, I guess this would be like an ionosond. So you can see the digison section right here. These are ionosonds. They're for listening to the modifications of the sky they do. Um, but that doesn't mean this had it didn't have an output. I'll find that out in the future. I uh, just found out about it tonight. I'm pretty darn excited. Um, so then we go to back to the Chernobyl reactor. This is the the big one that's still standing. It is in the Chernobyl exclusionary zone. If you guys would like to see that, you can also scroll down here to nuclear explosions. And in the nuclear explosion section, click on Chernobyl fallout. And you can see that in 3D. So there is the Chernobyl radiation that is still there today. You could take tours of the Chernobyl area and go visit the Russian woodpecker and the nuclear site. And they'll put a dosimeter on you and warn you about the crazy freaking wolves. But regardless, this radiation still active, still there. Whenever there are forest fires, radiation goes into the air blows down wind so people are always worried about the Chernobyl site burning up. And lo and behold, right next to the most famous of the Duga 3 radars is a Krug. Um, and that was news to me. So I know it's news to you because this isn't anywhere, especially in all in one map. Um, moving on to the next site, I believe this is the receiving site for the Chernobyl reactor. It is in this building. It was loaded full of sensors. Um, pictures on that also on Wiki, um, Wikimapia. Um, 
me see right here. I think this is it. Let's go there. And you can see the building here. Um, photos of that. You got to love Wikimapia. It's just, it's unique. People have to put in the information themselves. Pretty rare, but that's the Duga 3 radar site um, listening post. And we're going to the next one here. This is the final of the three. And this is the transmit site here. Ooh, we just got a different picture there. That's an old black and white satellite image. You can almost make it out there. Who knows how old that photo is, but regardless, zoom out a little bit, we get a different color. It looks like the, the radar was right there. And this is also in Russia. So the final one in the list right here is probably the listening site for that. And it's another building. So that's the Duga 3 Steel Yard, Steel Works, Ionospheric Heating Facilities of Russia. That according to Thomas Bearden and some other facts that we found at weathermodificationhistory.com did weather warfare over America. Fascinating stuff. Buckle your seatbelt. So, as if this weren't enough, um, you know, how he's talking about these heating areas and the 10 hertz signal and all that, you know, one source of information is never really good enough for me um, because I have to take General Lieutenant Colonel Thomas Bearden's word for it. Now, I mean, he's a retired lieutenant colonel that should be enough for most people but you know let's really dig in right so then my buddy dominic marama found this this is some screaming evidence that's really going to tie a bow around all of this is ELF able to manipulate the weather? Have the, has a technique devised by Tesla permitted the Soviets to alter the world's weather? By Harry Call, there is his ham radio operator number. Popular Communications, which is like popular science, popular mechanics. This is for all the radio heads out there, so I'm pretty sure this is a damn serious article to be reading. Um, and you see right here, we're going to read the first part of it because it's fascinating. Last Christmas, the low temperature records in 21 states and 60 cities were broken. According to the National Severe Storms Forecast Center in Kansas City, 12 cities shattered all known records for record low December temperatures. Last Christmas, this paper is dated... <clears throat> June 1984, so in the winter of 1983 and the beginning of 1984, got real cold over America. While this was going on, December in Europe was unseasonably warm. Paris was basking in temperatures ranging as high as 70 degrees, notwithstanding the drain on energy resources of North America, the cold weather here during December caused the deaths of 138 persons and damaged many millions of dollars worth of crops. Of course, these have not only been not been the only strange weather patterns noted in recent months or years. El Nino, for instance, the disturbance in the Pacific that shows up every 10 years and brings heavy rains to the portions of South America. El Nino has traditionally been very limited in scope, but when it popped up unexpectedly and off schedule in 1982 and 83, the New York Times reported that it was much larger than usual with the entire Eastern Pacific from Chile to Alaska being affected. What? So record temperatures, you know, record low temperatures, floods, uh, you know, just El Nino's off its regular scheduled, you know, it's hot as hell in Europe. That's crazy. It gets crazier on page two. Now you can see the full page here. All the links are in the details and on the map. So this guy, in 1978, Dr. Andrew Mitrowski of the K 
Canadian State Department commented on this technique using ELF radio signals. He said, in the case of the winter of 1976-1977, I was born in the winter of 1976, the Soviets have managed to establish terrestrial electrical resonance. My nickname is Resonated. And then learned how to establish relatively stable and localized ELF magnetic fields, which were able to hamper or divert the jet stream flow in nor the northern hemisphere. He described just how stationary fronts were established over West Coast North America between Baja California and Alaska, which permitted great diversion of air movement and the maintenance of high and low pressure areas. He went on to observe in the case of the winter of 77-78, the Soviet scientists involved had the ingenious idea of setting up one series of standing columnar waves that extended from the westerly tip of Alaska all the way to Valparaiso, Chile. This columnar wave form was projected from just outside Angart, Siberia. East of this formation, the weather was drier, and west of it, pre precipitation was enhanced. He further stated, as the columnar waves rotated clockwise, the westerly winds were sucked upwards counterclockwise, something that I've seen on Pacific Redwoods channel many times. Shout out to that guy. Um, sucked up upwards counterclockwise into the upper atmosphere while a drag brought, brought air from the upper atmosphere on the opposite side. What? Mitrowski was not alone in this concept. In early 1977, some American scientists agreed that there was evidence that the Soviets were using highly intense radio signals to move Arctic air masses away from their coastlines and towards North America. In 1979, Dr. Walter Orr Roberts of the Aspen Institute in Colorado was quoted as saying, The idea of changing the conductivity of the atmosphere as a weather modification experiment is not ridiculous. Weather is affected by the jet stream 7 to 10 miles above the Earth. Weather modification could be accomplished by regulating the movement of electrically charged particles in the upper atmosphere. That would result in changing the direction of the jet stream to some degree. And then we get into Tesla. This is smoke and gun evidence, people. You can't find it anywhere else. It does appear that the Soviets have been exploring the theories and experiments of Nikola Tesla, the Slavic genius who was born in 1856 in what is now known Yugoslavia. He came to the U.S. and although he advanced some brilliant concepts and produced a number of startling inventions in the fields of radio and electric power transmission, he was not fully appreciated by his contemporaries. He died a rather obscure person in 1943. However, in recent times, more serious attention has been paid to his ideas than during his lifetime. Man died penniless. Thank you, J.P. Morgan. At the turn of the century, Tesla proved that the Earth might be used as a conductor of electricity and would respond to electrical vibrations at specific frequencies. He demonstrated his theory by illuminating 200 electric lamps at a distance of 25 miles without any connecting wires. He suggested many possible uses for his discoveries, including modification of the weather. Now this is where we get our smoking gun evidence. Dr. Mitrowski postulates the, US so the Soviet ELF signals are pulses on a frequency of 31.5 hertz, which differs a little from the 10 hertz that um, is quoted on Wikipedia and Bearden, nonetheless, um, and have caused giant standing wave troughs in the Rocky Mountains between Alberta and New Mexico and another through the eastern United States. Now, I could go on to read the rest of this. I hope that you will. But I want to really just jump right on top of that. So, 
three ionospheric heaters back in the 80s doing weather warfare over America by sending a low fre- ELF, extremely low frequencies, between 10 and 31.5 hertz, changed the electricity of the sky above America, created standing wave troughs that diverted weather jet streams, and the El Nino was freakishly large in 82 and 83 when this thing was in operation, and Chernobyl blew up in 86, shutting it down. Was that a coincidence? There are no coincidences. So, for those who've never heard of a standing wave, this is a great video, Making Standing Waves on YouTube, and you can see them right here. Standing waves, they're actually pretty beautiful to look at. Another angle of that, perpetual motion. Our, um, our sky is water. It can be affected by acoustic and electromagnetic waves and create standing waves. Fascinating stuff. Check that video out. Another um, term for that is called a Lee wave. That's right. My name is Jim Lee. Just a coincidence. Um, Lee waves sometimes called mountain waves, also known as gravity waves, are standing waves in the sky. And it is true that these can be created by um, just mountaintops. Okay? Um, But this is not a coincidence where you have these all of these you know evidentiary things um happening this is some pictures of standing waves lee waves on satellites um i guess these are supposed to be it says in the andes and the saharan uh desert so these are mountaintops here's another shot of an island mountaintop this is a volcano creating a standing wave but from below, this is what we see. Now I see lots of these photos on, you know, um, you know, many people's uh, Facebook. Uh, they usually attribute them to chemtrails, um, and but you know, most of us in the know go, no, this is, you know, can either be naturally occurring or can be artificially created. And artificially creating Lee waves and gravity waves can be accomplished through ionospheric heaters. Um, And if you don't know about all of the ionospheric heaters, you just simply come over here to climateviewer.org and click on, guess what, ionospheric heaters. And you can see all of the ionospheric heaters of the world. Come back to me. So now there's a whole lot of these things. Apparently, not only, you know, did America think it was cool to create the heart facility up here at 3.6 million watts, it still doesn't hold a candle to a nuclear-powered 10-megawatt Russian woodpecker, um, but it's fancier technology. And instead of creating the low-frequency waves just straight out of the ground, um, HARP operates at 2.8 to 10 megahertz and then uses the ionosphere to create those extremely low frequency waves. How low? Well, during the Fukushima meltdown, there was a 2.5 hertz signal that was clearly noticeable, but it goes even lower. They can get down to less than 1 hertz. That's extremely, or ULF is sometimes an ultra low frequency. So these types of frequencies can do things from make earthquakes to obviously modify jet streams according to not only Thomas Bearden, but Dr. Mitrowski and the other doctor I just referenced in that paper from Popular Communications. So this is getting to where it's this is not a conspiracy these are you know provable facts with backed up evidence and and atmospheric effects that are freakishly weird so what the heck man why are people telling us to put our tinfoil hats on and then you see things like this whales weather forecast for february rare 
polar vortex could bring snow to many parts of the UK. The phenomenon was, causes Arctic air to suddenly warm up and send freezing cold blasts southward. Come on. I mean, are we really still there? Um, so these polar vortexes can be exacerbated by jacking with the jet stream. And what can jack with the jet stream? A whole bunch of ionospheric heaters all along the North Pole. Um, of course, the Duga 3 radars in this ionospheric heater map also, but not to the extent as the new map I just created tonight. Um, so please check into that pretty epic stuff. So just so happens that I was looking at the satellites, and I'm up here in the live satellite section. I'm going to click on Modus Terra Corrected. We're going to come over here, and I'm going to take you back to yesterday. Oh, it's still there today. How convenient. That's Trum, so let's go back over here. We're going to go over here and look at where Harp is. So, just yesterday, and I'm going to do that just by clicking back to yesterday, I saw this. This is the Harp facility, and this looks like a pretty blocked up zone to me. And what is this going to do? This is going to create another vortex it's going to send some more cold air down our way so here's your last little aha moment if you go up here and you click on harp it's going to fly you down to the harp facility but it's also going to load up something called the harp vlf buoy which is here and what do you do when you zoom out and you look at both what you start to see is there's harp the buoy is right here and that is directly in line with this cleared out zone right there because that's where harp signal fires normally that's why they put a buoy all the way down here to catch the signals before they hop back to the north pole because that's how these ionospheric heaters work they fire massive amounts of electricity into the sky they can alter the jet stream they can do all kinds of weird stuff it's happened before and it happened with the russian woodpecker it's well documented now for certain these are scalar weapons based on te tesla technology and ionospheric heaters are now all over the world so I hope that people will look into these references. They are provided in the details of this video. It will be, this will be available on climateviewer.com. But I find it absolutely fascinating to, to finally find some evidentiary link between not only ionospheric heaters, weather warfare, and the Chernobyl reactor meltdown, which coincidentally happened three years after the freakishly large um, El Nino, the dead people all across America um, from the record freezing temperatures, the fact that two scientists are, in addition to Thomas Bearden, are willing to go on record as saying, this is a real thing, that if you put ELF waves into the sky that you can modify jet streams you can create lee waves gravity waves you can set up atmospheric blocking zones and it happened before it's happening right now and nobody's talking about it so this guy and you guys and that's why i appreciate all your support so please continue to support me at patreon.com slash climate viewer. Um, and once again, big shout out to Southern California deplorable Henry Lindman for the comment. I probably wouldn't have made this map tonight if you hadn't have brought that up. And I definitely will be adding this to the environmental warfare section of weather modification history. So this video and all the links and details and references will be added to the timeline permanently because those who forget the past are doomed to repeat it and that's our mantra over at weathermodificationhistory.com you just got schooled on ionospheric heaters steering jet streams the russian woodpecker 
the Chernobyl meltdown and some real factual proof on how it's all related. You share this video with the next, you know, smart aleck scientist, the next tr troll, and you put it in their face and you say, dude, this is a real thing. These microwaves of doom around the planet are controlling the weather. It happened before. It'll happen again. And unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, those who forget the past will be doomed to repeat it. I appreciate you guys watching this stream tonight. Freaking epic for me. I am a mapper at heart. It is my number one pleasure. Seeing evidence like this link up, having you know some credible stuff to go behind it, that's what being a true activist is all about. You're now armed with the truth. You're able to spread it. It's available in a map, and it's going to be there forever. I love you guys. I really appreciate your support. Uh, please hit me up in the chat room. Um, I will be answering those regularly. Support me on Patreon. Come over to climateviewer.org. Check out the map. Go over to climateviewer.com if you get uh, a hink, uh, you know, an inkling to do that. Check me out on the Grime Erica podcast coming up um, pretty soon. And remember, attack ideas, not people. If this video resonates with you, leave me a comment because I love hearing from you all. First time here? Be sure to subscribe and click the bell. The bell doesn't always work, so come to climateviewer.com and sign up for our newsletter. Remember, it would be impossible for me to do this without your support, so please join my Patreon or buy me a coffee on PayPal. And always, attack ideas, not people.